Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one work by composer X, it would have to be work A. We're right back to A because composer X begins with an A. It's Alcon. Charles Valentin Alcon. Yeah, the French guy. Alcan, Alcon, whatever you want to call him. This is an amazing, amazing choice in my personal view. It's the 12 etudes in all the minor keys, opus 39. It's one opus number, opus 39. It's about two hours long, and it contains, well, 12 pieces in all the minor keys. But boy, what you get for your money, it's unbelievable. Alcon was one of those composers who was as good as unknown until about, well, 20 years ago. He was, he was, very famous in his day, in the 19th century. He, he died, I think, around, oh, the 1860s, 70s, somewhere in there. I could look it up, but I mean, who cares? You can look it up if you want. Um, and he had an amazing following. He was one of the three great composer pianists of the, of the Romantic Virtuoso age, along with Chopin and Liszt. He had such a technique that he made Liszt nervous, and he wrote piano works that were so difficult that they were considered unplayable for much of the 19th century, but they're very, very carefully written. And they're all playable. They're also incredibly tightly structured, formally, really amazing. And you hear that in the etudes in all the minor keys. There's another set, Opus 35, of 12 etudes in all the major keys, but this set is bigger. It's just bigger and yummier in some ways. What you get in this package is, well, it starts with a piece marked Like the Wind, Come Le Vent, it's marked prestissimamente, as fast as humanly possible. It's quite simply the fastest piece ever written. It's unbelievable, unbelievably insanely fast. Then you get another piece called En Rhythme Molossique. It's a rhythm, it's a rhythmic study, it's, but it's a rhythmic study in which the rhythm is based on Greek and Latin poetry. Molossic rhythm, in case you care, is is a rhythm in which every foot, or rhythmic foot, whatever you call it, consists of three equally spaced notes. That's all I know about it, and I have no idea what that has to do with this piece because it goes bum ba 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 da 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 I have no clue, and I'm not worried about it, and please don't tell me. Don't even begin to tell me. It doesn't interest me in the least. It's a marvelous piece, whether the rhythm is molossic or something else. And then we have the scherzo diabolique, a little bit of the deviltry that you hear in, like, Liszt, for example. Only Alcan's deviltry is always, it's, 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 it's not, it's, it's not, like, mischievous in Liszt's kind of way. Liszt's deviltry is always, you know, half sinner, half saint. Alcan just goes all the way. He's all sinner. <laughs> you know, it's really, really rigorous and exciting. So after that comes a four-movement symphony for piano solo. And it's in progressive tonality because each movement is in a different key. So it doesn't return to its opening, but it's a four-movement symphony. It's about half an hour long. And the movements are wonderful. It's got a funeral march. It's got, oh, it's got all kinds of cool stuff in it. And and an insanely virtuosic finale as well. That's really fun. Oh, it's, it's just so cool. And again, it's relentless. Your left hand's going like for like five minutes. It's but that's even that's not the the most amazing thing because the most amazing thing is the concerto for solo piano, where the pianist has to imitate the piano and the orchestra and both of them together and separately. The first movement is half an hour long. Oh, baby. And uh, wow, it's just one of the most incredible and legendary pieces of romantic excess in the entire keyboard literature. Then after that, as if that's not enough, you get an overture. I mean, a really nifty little overture. Um, it's, it's really fun. It's another exercise in the projection of orchestral textures at the keyboard. And then, finally, last, but certainly not least, oh no, you get 
the amazing, absolutely amazing Aesop's Feast, Le Festin d'Aesop, a series of variations on a really perverse little theme. Bum, 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 bum. It's kind of like Ba Ba Black Sheep in a minor key. And, and the variations are just insane. And at the, at the end, it gets very dark, very, very dark and creepy and spooky. And the ending is shockingly abrupt, really, really scarifying. Oh, my gosh, it's a masterpiece. And that is the Etudes Opus 39. Now, we are presenting this to Cancrazans, the god of classical music, who has threatened to destroy all of classical music except for one work per composer. Well, this is a good one because this one work has 12 pieces and it's a biggie. But it's also it's also indicative of, of romantic piano insanity at its very best. It really is. And there's so much other romantic piano insanity and so many other romantic piano slash virtuoso slash composers like Talberg and then Moshelis. And, you know, there's just a bunch of them and Pixis and people we don't even hear anymore. And we deserve to. We need to. One so moment. I think, what the heck was that? So I think by presenting this, my phone just decided to talk to me for reasons. Still I, on it. I didn't ask you anything. Does your phone do that to you? I don't know why it did that. Anyway, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. And a wonderful argument for allowing us to hear all of this other piano music, including the etudes and all the major keys and all the other things that he wrote, the miniatures. He wrote unbelievably fabulous miniatures. So we deserve to hear as much of Alcon as he wrote, as with all of these other composers. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you for joining me. Take care.